Good evening, class, <clears throat> and welcome to our next tutorial on relevant question. Today, we're going to talk on decisions involving further processing. The other time, we talked about decisions on make or buy. If you're confronted with a decision to choose whether you should make a product in-house or to buy the product from an outside manufacturer, what, how do you, I mean, decide on such issues? From the quantitative perspective, we looked at which are the relevant costs for making, which are the relevant costs for processing and what's the difference and whether it makes sense to do make or to do buy, right? I must also make it clear that um, other decisions like outsourcing, whether to outsource a service to an outside contractor or to do it in-house, very, very much similar to make or buy. Even decisions like shut down decisions, whether you have to shut down some product line of your business or you have to make it, so still so keep it, make it run, involves very similar, I mean, principles as we have seen in make or buy. Okay, so today we're going to do further processing, but before before we actually get into the issues, let me kind of give you some overview. Further processing comes from uh, what we describe as joint processing. For most products in business, uh, you will see that the beginning of the production of the, of the product is some joint process which give birth to uh, some distinguishable products, two or more. And at a point where they become distinguishable, called the point of separation or the split off point, we will have some basic products which we can sell at that stage for some revenue. We can also process further these products into some enhanced forms before we sell. So the decision is actually on whether you sell the products in their primitive form at a split off point or you do further processing on them before you sell. Of course, when you do further processing on them, you do so to generate additional, I mean, sell them for a higher price. But you also know that the further processing will also come with further costs or extra costs. But you want to know the ultimate. Even with the extra cost of processing, does processing the further generate more profit than selling it at the initial stage or vice versa? Right, so that's what we're going to do. Let's do that with a simple question. Uh, even before this, let me also use another illustration to give you an idea of uh, further processing. Let's use this one. If you look at this drawing I'm trying to do, I'm picking this idea from, um, what do we call it? Um, those that are into wood processing, go to the forest to cut the tree, that big beam, all right? So they can process the trees, cut all the branches into this big beam. Yes, this is sellable. We can say this is, at this point, yes, you have a product you can sell. But this same log can be further processed into all the forms of uh, usable wood products that we see. Four by two by four, four by four, facial board, plywoods and all those things. So do we have to sell them at this primitive form, the raw logs, or we should process them into all the finished wooden or wood products that we see. The decision to do it this way or that way depends, at least from the quantitative side, on the relevant cost and benefits. So that's another way to see 
or to get it clear about what we are trying to explain and demonstrate. So let's read this question. And it is about what I have just explained. So you read the question and you compare it to the scenario I have given. The Poison Chemical Company produces two joint products, Alash and Potu, from the same process. Joint processing costs of 150,000 cities are incurred up to the split off point. 100,000 units of Alash and 50,000 units of Potum are produced. The selling prices at the split off point are one CD, 25 pesos for Alash, and two CDs for Potum. The units of Alash could be processed further to produce 60,000 units of a new chemical called Alash Plus. But at an extra cost, extra fixed cost of 20,000 cities and a variable cost of 0 0.5 cities per unit of input, the selling price of the enhanced chemical called Alash Plus will be 3 cities, 25 pesos. Question Should the company sell Alash or Alash Plus? Right. So this is very similar to the scenario I gave first. So the company produces, there's a, there's a joint process, which at a certain point gives birth to these two products, Alash and Potum. We can sell them at this point of separation uh, products. And at the point of separation, 100,000 Alashes are produced and 50,000 Potums are produced. We can sell them. When we sell them, one Alash sells for one city 25 pesos, and one potum source for two cities. But we have an option of processing Alash into some refined form called Alash Plus, so that we can sell it at a higher price for three cities 25 pesos. But the further processing to enhance the Alash into Alash Plus also generates 20,000 fixed costs and variable cost per unit of 0 0.5 per input. So which one do we do? Which one will be more profitable, at least from quantitative perspective? Right, so we can do this statement. Already tried to do some sketch here, right? So we can do profit statement on them. Alash, Alash Plus. Selling price per unit of Alash is 125 pesos. One city 25 pesos, sorry. And that of Alash Plus is three cities 25 pesos. We picked this figure straight from the question. Volume of output. The question said 100 Alashes are produced from the joint process. But when we process Alash into Alash Plus, we get 60,000 of Alash Plus. So these are the volumes. When we multiply the selling price per unit by the quantities, we get this total sales revenue, All right? So this becomes a formula like, it's a product of the two. So let me do the formula. So product, product of this and this, right? And we just drag to fill the other one. So that's how we generated these sales revenues. And of course, uh, we understand that for the alas, there will be no cost because we are not processing there will be no further processing cost. Remember that the 150,000 costs, which is the cost that was incurred at the joint process level, is not identifiable with any one of them. Apart from that, we are trying to explain why this is not a relevant cost. In fact, the main reason why it's not a relevant cost is that at the point where they become distinguishable, this cost is already incurred. It's a past cost. And the decision to even process Alash further into Alash Plus, this cost is already incurred. Whether we decide to process Alash into Alash Plus or not, the 50,000 cities will, ha, has already been paid. It's a past cost, it's a sunk cost. So this cost that is incurred from the initial stage of the process up to the split off point, it's a past cost. The decision to do any further processing doesn't involve this, All right? So that's how come that this one is not factored in. So let's come. When we do further processing, there will be no, there's no further processing on Alash itself. So 
there will be no further production cost. But on Alash Plus, we are told that uh, before we can sell it for the 3.25, because it is enhanced, this is the enhancement cost. It will generate variable cost per unit of 0 0.25. So here will be zero, and let me do here. Here will be 0 0.25, 0 0.25 Ghana cities times, times is 0 0.25 per unit of input. The input into the, into processing of Alash Plus is, The inputs into the processing of Alash into Alash Plus is Alash. We process Alash into Alash Plus. So the input for Alash Plus processing is Alash. And the quantity of Alash is 100,000. 100,000. So when you multiply 100,000 by the variable cost per unit of 0. Point, it is 0. 0.5. 0.5, so we get 50,000, right? And the question also said that the enhancement of Alash into Alash Plus will also generate extra fiscal cost of uh, 20,000 in the original question. Let's read it. It's here. The units of Alash could be processed further to produce 60,000 units of a new chemical called Alash Plus, but at an extra cost of 20,000 fiscal cost, and variable cost per unit of 0 0.5 per unit of input. So that's what we are doing. 0 0.5 per unit of input has been done, giving us a total variable cost of 50,000. And this one is 20,000 extra fixed cost, right? So now we have all the revenues, all the costs. The total costs for the further processing will be zero for the alas because we are not doing any further processing on it. But Alash Plus is associated with 70,000 further processing. When we subtract, we are calculating our profits. It is sales revenue minus total cost. That will give us 125 for Alash and 125 for Alash Plus. So in this case, we are indifferent. But I don't see why we have to even worry ourselves with the further processing, with the cost of time wasting and other things to get the same as if we don't do that job, right? So in this case, it will be more appropriate for you to sell the product just at a split off point and not worry yourself to do any further processing because any if you do any further processing, the revenue, the, to the final profit will be the same as if you don't do the further processing. But just let's assume that if the further processing cost, the first cost that is required to do the further processing is a little lower, like say 15,000 instead of 20,000. But let's go and feed that new information here. So here will be 15,000. And let's say the variable cost per unit is 40 pesos or 0 0.5 CDs. Okay, so this is what the picture will be like. Then the profit of further processing or the profit that will be generated from Alash Plus, that is the enhanced form of Alash, will be more than the profit that will be generated from the raw form. And in that case, it will be more profitable to do further processing. We'll get a profit of 140,000 as against 125,000 for enhanced enhancement of the product and no enhancement of the product, respectively. Okay, so basically, so that's um, that's what the further processing decision framework looks like. It's not difficult. Most part of it has to do with everyday things that we do common sense. When I say common sense, it's not an insult. It's actually saying that don't think of it in some abstract way. Think of it 
what we the way we think every day in life yeah um Emilia is in class. Emilia, do you have any, any question? I understand you joined a little bit late. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have some questions, no please. Question. No question. Okay. So this is where we 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 close on the further processing decision. I'll try to give you other questions for you to practice with alongside this one so that you can grasp the full concept. So, like I said at the beginning, we have already done a tutorial on make or buy. The decision framework for make or buy is quite very similar to decisions for outsourcing. Outsource something you are doing or do it yourself. It is also very similar to decisions like um, discontinuation decisions, like discontinue a product line because it doesn't make profit or still make it stand. All of these decisions I have talked about, they are very similar to make or buy. The principles are quite very similar. And therefore, if you take questions and you run through them the same framework, you'll be, you'll be able to grab the concept. So what I'm going to do is I'll be able, I'll expose you to questions around each of these decision areas and then you attempt to solve them and you can discuss them. You also have to read the textbook to, to kind of get the concepts on your fingertips. Okay, so this is where we end and this is where we also end everything on relevant question. The next topic we'll be dealing with will be limiting factor analysis. It is also in your textbook, I think. It is the chapter that follows limiting factor analysis. So please do well to read from your textbook. The next one will be limiting factor analysis. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Tuesday. Thank you.